Fallout. Sweet Fallout. Fallout 3 is probably one of my top five favorite games, right next to Final Fantasy XIV, Fallout New Vegas, Metal Gear Solid, and Resident Evil. Seeing how it has been years since I played the game, this is going to get interesting. Recently, I've been watching a lot of challenge runs by Nurbit, and just watching it made me want to try this as well. Thinking outside of the box, trying new things. So this run was going to originally be a Power Fist run, but I had to change a heart early on to something more easily available in the early game. Brass Knuckles. So the rules are for this run are as follows. I'm only able to use the Brass Knuckles as my only form of weapons. Caps can be used as normal. I do not consider Tutorial Vault 101 to be part of the challenge, because if that was so, this run would is already over. If you think the run fails at this point, go ahead and tell me below. And I believe that is it for the rules, so let's get this party started. Names aside, it took me a long time to decide on what to call them, but once that was done, we went to baby stat assignments. Here are my stats. I've never played a melee focus build, so I do not know what I'm getting into. I, I figured having, I figured having ten in strength, nine in endurance, agility, and luck, everything would be fine. This does mean that I have a hard time getting access to the lamplight, but I do have a solution for that issue. I will talk about it when we get there. Now for the tenth birthday, when I got the BB gun, I tried to fire the targets down the hall. Didn't work so well. Moving on. Careful. For the Sweet 16, oh, I decided to steal Dad's bobblehead, punch Butch in the face repeatedly, and went to talk to the teacher. For my skills, I went with Medicine, Sneak, and Unarmed. Thinking back on it now, I should have taken Repair instead of Sneak, because I did not use Sneak at all this run. Now for my Great Escape. I was going to blow my way through the vault until I decided to take pity on Butch for him being an asshat when we were younger, so I go there, curb stomp some rad roaches, doing so gives me Butch's tunnel snake armor, which is decent early game, but not for unarmed as I thought. From there I just make a beeline over to the overseer's room. Thank goodness that the lock is very easy, otherwise I would have to figure out another way to get the key. Then I hack the overseer's terminal. While playing Ring Around the Rosie with one of the guards, it was at this point I looked into the cabinet and saw the password there. Oh well. From that point, it was time to get out of here and for the run to truly begin. I began trying to max out unarmed first, but having intelligence of one, it was going to take a while, so that means I have to do a lot of serious side questing to get more XP to max this out. That means I have to go to Megaton, help Moira with her book, for my first perk, I took the Little Leaguer, still thinking melee was good for Brass Knuckles. Whoops. From there, I went over to Silver to get some caps for easy money to get to Moriarty, which you'll never see from at this point on. As I was going to Megaton, I meet Lucky Harith. He happens to be carrying a couple of Brass Knuckles for me to buy, as well as some stim packs. As I unload my belongings, I head inside to meet Lucas and discuss about this arming bomb, but I don't just yet. I go meet Moria, and she happened to be wanting to lean on thin air. So I talk to her about living in the vault and heading to Super Duper Mart. And there, that is where I go next. She also has Brax Knuckles as well, so I grab them before I head out. My first true enemy encounter was with a vicious dog, which went down a few hits, which isn't too bad. And we get to the fun portion. I got a random encounter in front of the Super Duper Mart where there are hunters fighting off a Yagwai. So I went in swinging. I decided the best action was to use Vats, which was clutch, because when I came out of that fight, I was almost at zero HP. So I decided to see what the hunters had, and oh boy, they had a, a lot of meat. Now inside Super Duper Mart, I had to make a hard right turn, grab what weapons and ammo I could sell, the raider didn't like that and started swinging at me a couple of bats hits later and he's down. I made my way to the back to get the supplies for Moria, fighting raiders as I progress. The last one had a raider blast master helmet. So with that and mentats, this will get my explosive skill just where I need to to disarm the megaton bomb. From there I grabbed everything I could out of the raider storage area and made my way out of the store. 
With the power of Helmet and Mentats, I'm able to disarm the bomb and head to Lucas to claim my reward. And get my reward from Moria. From there, I decided to head towards the Citadel, but along the way, I made my presence known to the Talon Company. There, I got rid of three of them, took their armor as my prize, mainly due to it being better than what I had. The ones with the combat knives kept blocking my attacks, but no matter, Bats wins the day again. I decided to pay a visit to the Jefferson Memorial just to mark it on the map and to get it out of the way. There, I also conversed with the locals and showed them the power of my fists. Circling super mutants with nail boards proved to be a valuable strategy. There I made my way to Rivet City, dealing with the mutant population along the way. Once I got into Rivet City, I realized what level I was and decided to get more XP. And I decided to head back to Super Duper Mart and take care of the ant population in Grey Ditch first. Once there, I saw my first ant and went swinging. When I saw the damage I was doing, it made me rethink what I was doing for a hot minute. Well, I decided to continue the pummel the ant population until I meet Brian Wilkes, so I help him with his ant problem. I later met Dr. Lesko. He asked me to save the ant queen, but kill her guards so he can change the DNA of the ant population back down to the normal size. Five guard ants down, I headed back to claim my prize. A mutagen, which to increase my strength. Now I have to find a place for Brian to live. So I head back to Rivet City, find Vera Weatherly, convince her to take Brian. She does. Now I can continue my quest. But first, the game crashed. Yay. So after the game came back, I decided to head to Paradise Falls. One for the easy XP, and two so I can get that little portion of the Lamplight quest out of the way. So I can get in. It was quick. There was one part where I was fighting Clover, and a slaver decided to pick up a rocket launcher and try to use it. Luckily, he hit the bench. So he just made himself a bigger target. Once he went down, I quickly grabbed it and to prevent others from using it. Eulogy Jones went down super easy. Even though I was using bats to target Jones, his companion died first. Eat! Now that all the slavers are dead, I go rescue the children and other slaves. So it was time to get to Casey's garage. Along the way, I got lost. But I managed to find a church which had a sniper perched in it. The power of bats, I was able to teleport up there and deal with the problem. Which is funny to me because I just fused with him for a second. From there, I take his gear and try to remember where to go. Along the way of me remembering, I find a rad scorpion fused with the ground. I took pity on it and decided to put it out of its misery. So instead of making it to Casey's garage, I made it to a little lamplight. Met McCready, got access to the place, and got my gear repaired. At this point, I was starting to get frustrated on where Casey's garage was, so I looked it up. Now that we are there, the second act can begin. Once inside Tranquility Wayne, I went to the abandoned house, put the code in to bring China to America. Once out, I talked to Dad, head back to River City, talked to Dad there again, then head back to the memorial. The memorial super mutants were easy to deal with, nothing much went on there, helped Dad with the reactor, and watched the Enclave arrive. Made it back to Dad, watch him die in front of me. Then I escorted the scientists through the sewers and to the Citadel. In the sewers, the Enclave with the Prosma rifles were taking me off to no end. So I wall walked to them and used bats to punch them in the face. This worked, but it had an unintended side effect. Dr. Lee decided she wanted to be up there as well. When I waited, got to the other side, the others were with her. Once out, we got to the Citadel, learned where Vault 87 was, decided not to do that, and decided to do something stupid. I decided to take Sticky to Big Town. I gave Sticky some weapons and off we go. He does give off decent covering fire, but that is all I trust him with. But along the way, we encountered a Robo Brain and our second crash of the game. Joy. Now round two. I decided to play it smart, leave Sticky at Little Lamplight, and go to Big Town first. This works. He lives, I get free XP. I meet Buttercup. I decided to swoon her. It works with my low charisma intelligence. So now Fisty Cuffs has a girlfriend. Since I'm here, I wanted to get one more level before going into Vault 87, so off to Germantown PD, I go. I did hit a few landmines though. Shorty and Red have been rescued, and off we go back to Big Town. I turned down my reward, helped them with the wave of super mutants. 
and everybody's happy. With that note, I head to Vault 87, start the fire alarm, release all the prisoners, got into a scuffle with Sid. Who is he? I do not know. Had Hawks join me so he can get the Gek. Now with the Gek in hand, it is time to meet Colonel Autumn. Once inside, I bust a move to President Eden. I take the FEV virus and head to the Citadel. I give the virus to the Brotherhood and start the escort to Jefferson Memorial. Then I punch the crap out of Adam. Put the code in and say, yes, you can beat Fallout 3 with just brass knuckles. This is my first time doing something like this, so my editing style for it is different, but if you like it, hit the subscribe button and the like button, and have an awesome day.